a few family members who have used it. They're very passive, laid back on marijuana. But when they start getting into meth, I can tell you it's a horror story. It changes them. And it doesn't just change them for a short period of time. Even if they break the habit, they're never the same as before they used it. Simply not the same. They're not the same person. They just don't have the motivation anymore, even after they quit. And just look at them. They age. Physically, they they shorten their lives. Is that worth it? No. And believe me, I I have, I have knew people that out of the blue, one day just started doing it like four or five years ago, and it, it has changed them. That's a drug that there really is no rehab for. And every time you do it, it does do permanent damage, and it, you don't restore that in your brain, and, and it it affects the nervous system. And I've seen some people after they quit for years, they're jerking around like, you know, they're drowning out of water. And it's because it affects the nervous system. It affects emotionally, uh, mentally. And that drug is the worst. It has a, what they call a second life that is un uncharted. I mean, I, I've seen this stuff real life of the effects of it. Um, it. It's just, it is the worst. I agree with him wholeheartedly on that. I can honestly tell you, we had a, Back years ago, a family friend, beautiful woman, very, I mean, a beautiful woman, and not just physically, emotionally. And with the guy she was with, somehow she got hooked into using meth. And within a year, she was shriveled up. She had wrinkles. She had missing teeth and scars from all these sores that would come and go. When you can always tell when somebody's using meth because they break out in sores everywhere. And, mm-hmm. and this beautiful woman that I remembered physically and emotionally was no longer her. It was not the same person. Not the same. Same shell, of, but not the same person anymore. That's what nope. drugs do to you. That's why i just saying young people... I don't know what's going on. Of course, you know what? I probably, my dad said the same thing back in my generation, but you know, it wasn't, it, I guess it was as bad, but no, it wasn't as bad because now you can find it everywhere. And that's scary. It is scary. It's in, it, it's such a scary drug. People will steal $2 for a little, cause it's, it's so cheap. That's the scary part, but it's so cheap and people make it themselves around here. And a lot of people don't realize it. They use lithium in it from batteries and stuff. And lithium, all it takes is one drop of water, and it blows up with a chemical explosion of instant 3,000 degrees. And these people are making it, and they're perspiring, and a drop of sweat falls and hits that. It, that's how a lot of people get blown up and burnt. But, you know, a lot of people are making these, and they're on the other side of the wall of an apartment where there might be kids on the other side that have no clue what's going on. Oh, and that, and it contaminates, and they usually have to, you know, oh, boy, the the mess. You know, when I was managing for that 10-year break, uh, the camera stores I told you about, yeah. we would we would have lithium batteries by the bag full of, you know, used ones, you know, people buying new ones, throw it away. Well, we couldn't throw it away because of the law. We had to dispose of it the right way. So we would have bo- a big box that we'd bag it, and then we'd take it to the place to have it disposed of. There was one guy who would come in and say, do you have any used lithium batteries? I, I check them with a the meter and, you know, and I, and the ones are good. I use them. And one of my <laughs> employees was, you know, I men's to me, gave him a box that probably weighed 20 pounds of lithium batteries. Oh, wow. And, you know, I, I could, I figured this is kind of strange. So I did some research and then I found out what, it, what they were doing with it. So I called up law enforcement and I said, okay. And they said, well, the next time he comes in, Here's this number. Stall him for a while, and we'll come and take care of it. And lo and behold, about a month later, he comes in. You got any lithium batteries? Yeah, I got them in the basement. Hey, Ted, will you go down there? It, it, but will you get me some other stuff while you're down there? Sir, you're going to have to wait about 20 minutes while he's doing this. Well, he, guess what? That 20-minute time was just about right when they came in with the handcuffs. Yeah, that is... Uh yeah, they pull the lithium strip out of it. It's, it is amazing that, that, that more people aren't killed with that. And you're right. The aftermath of the, all the chemical, the excess, the waste from all that, 
that that stuff is deadly. The fumes can be deadly. The acid, you some of that you could touch it, it like get acid burns on people. And imagine when little kids get that, and and the fumes, they, you know, it's it's just awful all around, awful. And the effects it has with the second life, and it changes people permanently. You never, they never come back to what they ever were. Oh yeah, could you imagine? You rented a house out, a nice house out to a family, and they turn it into a meth lab. And then it gets busted. Guess what you do? You lose your house. That's what yeah. happens to you. Yeah. And even if you don't lose your house, you pretty much, if they've been doing it a while, that they, stuff soaks in the wall. No, you stuff. lose you even, it one way or another. They 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 take it away and they come yeah. in and the, the house mask comes in and that is it. The house is not livable ever again. They they have to bring that special, th- you know, and decontaminate it and then they tear mm-hmm. it down and then it's gone. Yeah, it really isn't livable again. You're right. You're absolutely right because you're going to get cancer or, or or acid burns or something. It's just all bad. Yeah. Well, you know what? Tonight, uh, tonight, it just went by so fast. I, I I got some emails from some people. You know, they weren't happy at the beginning of the show what I said. Uh-oh. And you know what I said about that that uh, text message you got. I yeah. cannot. And I won't, okay, uh, sit there and start telling people they can't come on my show because some other person feels they're a fraud. You know, how many people feel that anybody could be a fraud? So, I mean, any guest you bring on, you're going to have a certain amount of people that don't like the guest. It's just, And you know what they normally do when you don't like a guest? Screw on. You just go <laughs> to some other radio show. That's what you That's do. Or, or go watch TV. Or, or or go spend some time with your wife and tell her you love her or your wife, you know, the woman go tell her husband, I love you. You don't have to listen to a guest if you don't like him. But you know what? I could never sit there and tell another sh- talk show host, don't bring this guy on. He's a, a fraud. He's a fake and all that. Because you know what? Everybody who does a talk show, everyone, radio, TV, or these TV shows that are on the History Channel or the Travel Channel. Well, then we're not going to have no shows because somebody out there is going to always say, that person is a fraud. Just remember that. And I don't feel I have the right to make that judgment. Again, the listener has that right. They don't have to listen to that guest. Nope. And remember uh, Al Bielik in the Time story on Art Bell's show. He didn't judge him. He let him tell the story. Oh, yeah. That's all entertainment. Well, till tomorrow when we talk about the global superstorm with Whitley. Oh, boy. Tomorrow yeah. is going to be an awesome show. I can't wait for it because I think I have read that book so many times. So many That's times. Good. And you know what? It's true. It's just was 25 years late, but you know what? What is time anyway? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, listen, whether it's 20 years or tomorrow, it's maybe day after tomorrow as the movie was titled, but it still happened. Yeah, I really like that movie, by the way. Except in the subway, or I mean, in the basement of the library when it floods. <laughs> yeah, right. That was a freaky movie. You know, the part of that movie scared me the most is when that freeze came and everybody like froze solid instantly from breathing. Yeah, could you imagine if somebody didn't freeze and they threw a football and hit one of those people? What would happen? Well, till tomorrow. Well, me and James Krishbaum will be back. Everybody have a good one and thank you. About the land of Afghanistan where empires go to die. Alexander the Great, he tried and failed. The Mongols, they did too. The British and the Russians, they got their ass kicked too. America's been there many years and I ask myself why. We don't learn from history where empires go to die.